Hi, I'm Alex Lamb and welcome to my second video in my exciting group selection series. Last time I promised you that I was going to show you what happens and test this idea and I kind of lied. Um, what I'm going to actually do this time, because I decided that was actually a smarter thing to do, is show you what I did. So this time you're in for a thrilling tour of my code. How's that for an exciting adventure? But it'll be fun, I'll make it fun, I promise. Uh, Alright, because I like code. Code is, code is nice. Um, let's move on and look at some code. Uh, I write in Java because I'm old school. Java was a nice language before Oracle went and ruined it. Anyway, so moving on. Um, what have I got? What is in this simulation? What do we need in order to test out this idea that takes us to the frontiers of human knowledge, to a question that is so charged and so dramatic that 140, and I'm not kidding, 140 evolutionary biologists got involved in a bitter battle over what was true. And we're going to at least attempt to solve it with just a few pages of code. So how are we even going to do that? Well, it's quite simple. For a start, let's look at the class that we've got. We've got an agent class here. Now, agents in the simulation are going to be super simple. They've got an identity. They've got a strategy, which if you remember from the last simulation, is they're either a defector or they're a cooperator, meaning they're either the kind of person who says, here, have some pie, um, without expecting anything in return, or the sort of person who says, yeah, thanks, I'll take that pie, and then, and then doesn't give anything back. Anyway, and they've got an age. Oh, no, they've also got a fitness, which basically tells you how healthy they are. Um, so are they sickly, like a sort of... A, waif starving in a garret, or are they sort of like somebody who gets to eat a lot of pie? Um, you get the general idea, and then underneath here is just a bunch of getters and setters. It's not a very sophisticated thing. And then we've got tribes. You'll remember that from last time I said that the agents live together in groups. Well, what we have here is a bunch of properties uh, for running tribes. So in other words, well, I'll, I'll describe what these various different numbers are a little bit later on, but you can see there's, there's not that much uh, running along here. Each tribe has, has a special colour that goes with it, and we can start that tribe off, or we can update it. And what we mean by updating it is we can just push forward the life of that tribe one day. And in each day of the life of the tribe, two people come together and play this little game where they decide to give each other some pie or not. Um, as we mentioned before, um, via this principle we've referred to as prisoner's dilemma, uh, which was this exciting thing that people use a lot in game theory when they're building simulations. And down here, there's a bunch of cheesy helper functions just to make that work. Uh, the next class we have here is the tribe environment, which is just basically the magic bucket um, that all of the different tribes live in. And we've got some properties we pass on to each tribe. And besides that, you'll see there's not much here. There's just how many tribes we've got, They've got how long a year is, and then we've got how many days there are, uh, like, yeah, that's, I, I, I think I may have a redundant variable there. Anyway, you get the general idea, not very much. Um, and then let's look at the simulation settings. What are we tweaking in our simulation that says what happens from, uh, from one run to the next? Well, we've got a certain number of tribes. Um, we've got how big the tr a, a tribe is when we kick it off. Um, we've got how many days there are in the year. So what we've said here is there's a th about a thousand days in the year. And what we mean by that is there's going to be a thousand significant interactions between members of the tribe in any given year. And, and also we've got the number of people who move from one tribe to another in any given year. So what we mean here is like like each year when the tribes come together and they do their, their tradey fighty thing, every now and then somebody might decide to elope with someone who they fall in love with from another tribe or some such thing, or they run away to join the blue people. And so we're just modeling, we're, we're putting in some parameter for that because we want there to be a certain amount of cross-pollination between the tribes, because otherwise we can't test the idea that uh, how, how much people need to be related in order for people to do well. Uh, so then we've got here a probability that uh, that somebody's going to have a kid that is very different from themselves, a mutation rate. Uh, and then down here, what this thing called interaction cost means is basically when you go and are nice to people or not, but you, you, you give somebody pie, um, What's it like outside? Is it a beautiful sunny day that makes you immediately feel healthier on the way back to your house? 
Or is there a bitter snowstorm so you have to trudge out and hand something to somebody and then, and then claw your way back to your home so that by the time you get back, you've taken a little bit of a health hit and you kind of wish you hadn't bothered. Um, and then we've got a certain amount of starting health. So kind of like Dungeons and Dragons characters, you start, or games characters, you start up with a certain amount of default health before you start racing around and you know looking for gems or whatever. So we've got the same kind of thing here. And then we've got these admittedly slightly peaky values down here. We basically say how old, how, how healthy do you have to be in order to have a kid? And then how much does it cost you to have a kid? So we'll see you, you don't, you don't have to be sort of too well off to, to have a kid. That's you've got a sort of moderate number here. And then this laughable variable here, this basically says that having a kid only costs you two in terms of health. <laughs> Speaking as a parent, that's hilarious. But never the mind, we'll, we'll get on to that later. And then we've just got some pretty innocuous numbers down here that, that say that there's, you know, the rate at which people are born is just a little bit higher than the rate at which people die. So that's it. As you can see, there's not that much to this simulation. And that's because, ladies and gentlemen, the frontier of human knowledge is right next door. And anyone who's prepared to bust out a slightly unfashionable programming language and hack about for half a day can reach that frontier and explore the truth for themselves. So that's it. I've toured the code. You've seen all that you need to see. Next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will activate the code and you will see what happens as we go into the third thrilling episode in our adventure of group selection.